Hey drone nerds, it's Matt. We're out at a farm today. I've got a Mavic 3 multi-spectral in my hand. We also brought along a T40. We're gonna show you everything about the agricultural workflow. Once we have our DJI Mavic 3 multi-spectral powered on, let's go into the menu settings and start building the mission. In the menu settings, we're gonna click flight route and then create a new route. For this application, we need to use an area route. Using GPS, we want to zoom into the area we intend to map. We're going to switch our map settings from standard over to satellite. You can see here that our home point is where we actually turn the drone on. We need to update that because the home point right now is under some trees. At the top of the menu settings, you'll see home point settings. The one on the left here is where you want to click. Now that our home point is correctly updated, we want to create our working area. To do this, just tap the screen to add waypoints that will surround your field. These working area points are also adjustable. It's always best to have your working area just slightly larger than the field you'd like to scan. You can see here, I'm really fine tuning the working area so that we can get maximum coverage and get a really good in-depth scan to process later. Once you're satisfied with the area, there's a check mark on the top left of the menu screen. Here we're using the M3E series, and under Select Camera Model, we can see M3M, that is our multispectral payload. You also have the option to select what lenses you'd like to use for the mission. Here we're going to use RGB as well as MS, which is multispectral. Now we're going to create our area route. This is the route the drone will fly in order to get the imagery that we're looking for. We're also going to name our area route so that if we would like to come back in the future and do this same scan for possibly an update later in the season, we can do that with a few clicks. Today, we're at Family Farms in Davie, Florida, so we're going to name it Family Farms. Below area route, you can once again confirm that we're using the M3E series, it's an M3M, and we're capturing RGB and multispectral images. For this multispectral mapping mission, we want to keep the settings on ortho collection. Because this field is fairly small, we're going to adjust the route altitude. We're going to change the route altitude to 98 feet, and you'll notice that your ortho GSD value will change as well. Now we're going to get 1.38 centimeters per pixel. That's a very detailed image scan. We want to leave elevation optimization on. This will download the area we're scanning automatically. Under the speed settings, we typically don't change this because the drone knows the optimal flight speed for the mission. However, you can change the values to suit your mission. Course angle changes the direction of the pattern the drone will fly doing its scans. Now you should change course angle if say you have a strong crosswind in your flight paths. Once you make your selection, you can see your route change accordingly. You want to make sure that you scan without a crosswind in your flight paths. It's much better to fly directly into and away from the wind for better scanning images. Under the advanced settings, the side overlap ratio and the frontal overlap ratio are how much each image is going to overlap itself during the scan. Typically these are set at 70 and 80%. Once you go back, you can also adjust your safe takeoff altitude. This can be adjusted to make sure the drone has sufficient height to get to the working area. Now that we have all of our parameters selected, on the top left, you can see how much area is being mapped, estimated time it's going to take, and estimated photos it's gonna take during the mission. We're looking at a mapping area just under 33 meters squared. The estimated time is about two and a half minutes, and the amount of captures is estimated to be around 75. Now keep in mind with the multispectral camera, this is captures, not images, so it's going to be a lot more in the end result. Once you're happy with all your settings, click the Save button in the top left. You'll get a confirmation that your flight mission is saved. Now it's time to set up our RTK positioning so we can get that centimeter level accuracy. Toggle on RTK positioning, and then under Select RTK Service Type, we're going to use a custom N-Trip network. It's going to give you a prompt that it wants you to restart the aircraft after switching RTK services. You can see Family Farms saved once it's restarted. Now in the bottom right, we're going to select Enter Camera View. We're going to go back into the RTK settings after the drone's restarted 
and enter all of our NTRIP network information. Then scroll down and select Save, and the RTK NTRIP network will start to configure. Under Status, you'll see RTK Connected and RTK Data in Use once all the information is inputted correctly and we have our corrections from the NTRIP network. You can go back into the menu settings under RTK, scroll down, and just make sure that everything is connected properly before takeoff. This is what gives us that centimeter level accuracy that we need. On the top left, click your flight path icon. This will bring up our Saved Family Farms mission. And then on the left, you'll see a play button with the name of the mission that you saved earlier. You will also see the FPV camera as it takes photos on the bottom left. Press the blue play button in the top left that has the name of your mission that we've created. This is going to bring you to a pre-flight check where you can just make sure all of your parameters are correct. Whenever we do these autonomous flights, we want to make sure that max flight distance is toggled on, and we want to bring that number down so that if the drone flies anywhere out of our working area, it will return to home. We're going to change our max flight distance to 500 feet, so that if the drone flies outside of our working area too far, it will automatically trigger a return to home. You'll see in the top right under signal loss action, we have it set at return to home. However, there is different parameters you can use for different missions. We're also going to adjust our return to home altitude. Now, if a return to home is triggered, this is the altitude the drone will ascend to before starting to return to home. For this mission, we're happy with 125 feet. We're going to leave our max altitude at 394 feet. After we're happy with these settings, we'll scroll down and click next. So here we have an error that says current camera file format set to JPEG and RAW. But what we're gonna do instead is just go back in the camera settings and deselect RAW. For this mission, JPEG is just fine. Once we go back into our pre-flight check, you'll notice that status error is now gone. For this mission, we're going to leave dewarping toggled off. Once everything is double checked, select Upload Flight Mission. This will send the mission to the drone. When you're ready to go, you can hit start. Now the drone's going to take off and do this scan according to our parameters. During the flight, if you'd like to see what the drone's doing, on the bottom left, you can click the camera view. You can go back and forth in these two views throughout the mission. Typically during a mapping mission, it's a good idea to keep it on the map view so you can see exactly how far along the mission the drone is. Now you can see the drone along its flight path as it takes its images. The remote controller will give you a camera shutter sound every time the drone takes a capture. You'll notice right before it's done with its mission, it's going to turn and go towards the center of the field. This is so that it can capture images that help the application software stitch all the images together. Once the flight route is complete, the drone will return to home. After the mission is done, you can hit the play button on the right hand side of your screen and go back through and see all the captured images that the drone just took, as well as edit or delete ones you don't need. In this instance, we did a shutter test with the camera just to make sure it was operating properly before flight. You can go ahead and delete that if needed. And now right here, you can go through all the captured images during the flight mission. So in our mission planning, we estimated 75 captures with four multispectral cameras, totaling 198 photos. Thanks for joining us today for part one on our agricultural workflow series. Next episode, we're going to go through processing of the imagery. If you have any questions, you can put those down in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. My name is Matt. Happy flying.